In addition to secret ensembles, such as the one Herbert Zipper formed in Dachau in 1938, official orchestras had been performing in German concentration camps since 1933. Auschwitz was the home to a number of ensembles, including a large orchestra in the Auschwitz main camp, orchestras in the men's and women's camp of Birkenau, and several other ensembles throughout the Auschwitz complex. These orchestras were composed of musicians who were recruited from the prisoner population. In the Auschwitz main camp, all detainees who were identified as musicians and who passed an audition were assigned to the gate orchestra. The orchestra's main responsibility was to play marches at the camp gate to provide a cheerful facade and rhythmic orderliness as the work details marched out of camp and returned every day. The ensemble also performed during executions, roll calls, and official visits by luminaries ranging from SS Commander Heinrich Himmler to a delegation of the Red Cross. The top 80 musicians from the Gate Orchestra also played in a symphony orchestra that gave concerts on Sunday afternoons and holidays for the SS officers and guards, as well as for their fellow prisoners. For Camp Commandant Rudolf Hoss, the performances provided regular opportunities to present himself to his visitors and family members as a cultured patron of the arts. For Hoss's subordinates, the concerts lent a sense of normalcy, decency, and even nobility to working in the camp. For the members of the orchestra, the events offered opportunities to earn food and cigarettes from their captors. And for the detainees who attended the symphony orchestra's performances, the music provided a mental escape from the harsh realities of life in Auschwitz. As one of the prisoners would say, the Germans put barbed wire all around the camp so that no one will escape, but I just close my eyes and I'm on the other side of the wires. They have no idea that we're all fugitives. As a reward for their contributions to camp life, the orchestral musicians sometimes received preferential treatment. This included special uniforms and lighter work details, such as copying music and repairing musical instruments. Many of the performers were assigned to work in the kitchen, giving them access to extra food while also allowing them to work inside. But membership in the orchestra did not by any means spare the musicians from reassignment, deportation, or death. One violinist was selected for execution during a rehearsal. He was allowed to finish the piece before being taken away and killed. The turnover in personnel was so great that a total of 800 musicians performed during the orchestra's four-year existence, even though the ensemble never included more than 120 musicians at any given time. One of the most influential Jewish musicians in the Birkenau Men's Camp Orchestra was the Polish violinist and composer Shimon Lox, who had been arrested in Paris in 1941. In the summer of 1942, Shimon was deported to Auschwitz. At first, he had been assigned to grueling work detail. After 20 days of growing increasingly emaciated and depressed, fortune had smiled on him. Shimon was saved by his block elder. Is there someone here who speaks Polish and plays bridge? Asked the Polish block elder one evening. He and two other block elders needed a fourth for their nightly game. Since the prisoners in that barrack had all been transported from France, Shimon was the only one who qualified. While playing bridge with the three block elders, Shimon happened to mention that he was a violinist and a composer. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? His block elder asked. Tomorrow you'll stay in the barracks and I'll take you over to the orchestra. And if you're accepted, maybe you'll live a little longer, one of the other block elders added, laughing. At dawn the next morning, Shimon's block elder took him to the music barrack, where conductor Jan Zaborski handed Shimon a violin and asked him to play. Shimon's fingers were stiff and bruised from three weeks of labor duty. His arms were so sore he could barely hold the bow, but he somehow find the, found the strength to launch into Mendelssohn's difficult violin concerto forgetting that the Jewish composer had been banned by the Nazis. Zaborski stopped him after just a few measures. Good technique, not bad, not bad, the conductor said. Tell your barracks chief that you have been accepted and for him to transfer you to this barracks. Also tell him to take you to the clothing storeroom where they'll exchange those rags you're wearing for decent stripes. And so Shimon was accepted into the orchestra. 